Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our resurrected living Savior, Jesus Christ. It's here. He is risen. I love that. Easter is awesome. And I can't help but as we gather here this morning, as we think and contemplate the wonders of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus, I can't help myself but think about smartphones. Yeah, I I said it, smartphones, these things right here. And what I mean by that is this. I think many of us look and treat the resurrection like some people treat their smartphones, or at least like I treat my smartphone. And what I mean by that is I think they underutilize it. You know, the new iPhone 7 that was released last year, it can do almost anything that you want it to. It it can take high-resolution pictures. If you're in a foreign country, it can be your interpreter for you. It it can keep your schedule if you'd like it to. It can remind you when you get to a certain location to do a certain thing. It fields phone calls for you. It, It delivers messages from people that they send to you. Shoot, if you want it to, it'll even monitor your house when you're halfway across the world. It'll monitor your automobile. You can change the the temperature in your fridge with them if you want. They can control your TV or they themselves can be a miniature television for you no matter where you are. Smartphones are really almost like a a personal assistant, assistant and It's kind of amazing that even though my smartphone probably has many of those same capabilities, the majority of the time I keep it in my pocket and I only use it when I want to make a phone call. So what that means is I'm not really getting my money's worth out of my smartphone because a new iPhone 7, um, when I looked up yesterday, are $750. My guess is this is probably somewhere in the $400 range, but all I'm using it for is a phone to make phone calls. And I'm not telling you to be phone savvy. That's not the message that I'm here to tell you. What I'm saying is don't underutilize the resurrection. Use it to its full potential. And as we study Paul's letter to Colossians, he reminds us just how impactful the resurrection truly is. He reminds us that Christ's resurrection is our life in death, in life, and in glory. You see, as we begin looking at our lesson for this morning, what we see is Paul really hits at the heart and soul of what it means to be a Christian. He starts off uh, our our lesson this way. He says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. And in that small phrase, there is a tremendous amount of comfort, isn't there? Because Christ rose from the grave, that means we too will rise when we die. And what we have is really a fundamental understanding that death is no longer scary for us as Christians. It's a momentary thing that that we pass through before we enter life eternal. And if I can continue the analogy from my introduction, I think this is like the phone, phone calling portion of a smartphone. Right? Everybody who has a smartphone at least I think, knows how to use it as a phone, don't they? Uh, To to use it to make calls. And if you don't, uh, I don't know why you have a smartphone. And my suggestion to you is to find someone that looks younger than you and ask them for help. Uh, But just as making phone calls is fundamental for a smartphone, so too is the hope of the resurrection in the life of a Christian. Right? As Christians... Uh, If we don't have the hope of the resurrection, what do we have? I mean, if Jesus did not raise, come out of the tomb, what do we have to celebrate? And Paul realized this, and he, he speaks this way in his letter to the Corinthians. He says this, he says, For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. And what Paul is saying is if on Easter morning, if those, when those women went to the tomb, if the stone was still there and the angel was not there and Christ's body was there in the tomb, then we are wasting our time here. There is nothing for us to be joyous about. 
But you heard from our gospel lesson this morning from Matthew. You heard from the angel. He was not there. He rose from the grave. And what we see is that the resurrection of our Savior, it is our life in the face of death, isn't it? It's our comfort. But what I'm here to tell you and what Paul tells us in our lesson is is that's not the only place where the resurrection gives us comfort or, or is for us. Paul continues after he says that small phrase to say this. He says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. And what Paul is saying to us is he's saying, Let the resurrection flavor your life. Let the resurrection of Jesus fill your life in every aspect. Let the resurrection move your eyes to heavenly things. That's what we're supposed to do. And now you and I both know that living every day here in this world, that oftentimes that doesn't happen. Instead of having our eyes fixed on heavenly things, we have them fixed on the things that are of this world. And it shouldn't be that way. Because when we live with our eyes fixed on earthly things, what we're really doing is living as people who have no hope in the resurrection. We're living as if Jesus, our Savior, was still dead. We're living as if the stone had not been rolled away because we're living under the control of our sinful flesh. And that should not be the case. But you and I both know that it is. You know those times. Those times when you really care about what the world thinks about you rather than what God thinks about you and you side with the world rather than God. Those times when you spend money and effort chasing after worldly pleasures that once you have them, their joy diminishes with time. Those times when you get so consumed in in what you have here on this earth that you start to worry that that you're not going to have enough or that you're not going to be provided for you because you forget all about your Father in heaven who is providing graciously for you. You know those times where you think more about the reputation that you have here on earth rather than the reputation that our Savior Jesus Christ has purchased and won for you with His own blood? If you've ever thought that way, if you've ever set your hearts and your minds on earthly things rather than heavenly things, I'm here to tell you that you need the resurrection of Jesus. You need it. Because without the resurrection of our Savior Jesus, you're dead. You're dead not only physically but spiritually. You need the resurrection of Jesus. And that's why Paul, in our lesson this morning, tells us, fix your eyes heavenward. Fix your eyes on the resurrection and see it as the one thing that makes you who you are. Paul is encouraging us to be, well, to be like this. You know those people who, who have smartphones and their, their noses are always in their phone? No matter where they go, no matter what they do, they can't do anything without consulting their smartphone or checking it. Those people that, that are in their smartphone so much that when they realize they don't have access to their smartphone, they become paralyzed. They don't know what to do. They even look at their smartphones at the dinner table. Paul's encouraging you to be that way. Now, he's not saying do that with your smartphone, but what he's saying is do that with the resurrection. Have the resurrection follow you wherever you go. Always be thinking about it. Always have it on your mind. Always be looking to it for your hope and your comfort. And the reason is, is because the resurrection is really the stamp of approval by God telling us that Jesus' work on the cross really paid for our sins. The resurrection is our receipt, so to speak. You know at Sam's Club, when you go to the very, you're getting ready to leave the store and they've got those checkers and they look at your receipt and they, they want to see if what you have in the cart is something that was actually purchased. Um, the resurrection is our receipt. And when God says, do you have eternal life? We, we point to the resurrection. We point to our Savior and says, here it is. He paid for it. For me, it's mine. The resurrection 
is what gives us the ability to live in the reality of the freedom that we have purchased for us by our Savior Jesus. The resurrection is not just for death. Not just for those times that we have close encounters with death, but it's for our life. It's for every day of our life. And Paul realizes that and he, he tells us that in the next, next little verse he has. He says this. He says, For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And what he's saying is, well, the resurrection changes you. It does. But that's not something visible from the outside. When I look at you and when you look at me, you don't necessarily know for sure if I have life from the resurrection in me. Now, sure, you could probably tell by my words and my actions, but that's not a 100% guarantee. And what Paul is saying is, right now, your life, the life that, that God gives you in the resurrection is hidden with Christ in heaven. So when we live on this earth, people can't tell if we have that hope. Not fully. But brothers and sisters, there will be a day when people will be able to tell when we will be arrayed in all the glory that Christ has in store for us. Paul says this, he says, When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And what Paul is saying is, right now, maybe it doesn't look all that great to be a Christian. Some people, maybe, they they look at you and they scoff you. They think little of your beliefs. But when our Savior returns in glory in the end, the truth will be revealed. And those people who scoffed at you, who made little of your faith, they will be made to bow down before our resurrected living Savior Jesus Christ. And those people who spent all of their time on this earth seeking after earthly pleasure and earthly things, they will be forced to look heavenward to see our Savior and to see what they missed out on. To see what our God gives to us freely. To see what glory they missed out on because of our Savior Jesus. They will see that they missed the eternal glory of eternal life which Jesus won for us. They will miss, really, the glory of the resurrection. Brothers and sisters, do not treat the resurrection like I treat my smartphone. Like only to use it for making calls, even though it can do so much more. The resurrection is not just our comfort in time of death, but it is our comfort for every single day of our life. It is something that moves us to want to serve our Savior Jesus. And it's that something that makes everything in our life the possibility to serve and praise our God. For example, yesterday, I was cleaning the bathroom downstairs in the parsonage. And to be honest, Not a task that I really like to do. But I was doing it because an expectation for some guests that were coming to our house. And as I was cleaning the bathroom, probably because I was preparing for today, but I started to think about the resurrection. And I started to think to myself, what that really means for me. And that means that I have life right now. That means I have uh, the ability, even in meaningless tasks, seemingly meaningless tasks in the grand scheme of eternity, to give my God praise and thanks. And that's what you have the ability to do. That's what everybody has the ability to do when they see the resurrection for what it truly is. We have the ability to live. Live a life that's pleasing to God. Brothers and sisters, see the resurrection for what it truly is. Christ's resurrection is our life. And death, right now in life, and future in the glory that we will have because of our Savior. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you every day to go to that empty tomb. Every day to find your joy, your comfort, your strength in the fact that our God sent His Son to conquer our sin so that we could live in service to Him. And it's all possible. Everything that we have and everything that we do is only possible. Are you ready? Because he is risen. Amen. Amen. Please stand. We'll continue our service.